Hey there folks, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so today we have a cut demo of the Dao Strong Kuritsuke. Uh, a lot of folks have been asking about this knife and I recently just got it in, so I'm still pretty new to it. Um, so far, I've had a lot of fun with it. The last demo I had with this knife was on apples and I'm sure you guys who watched that video was like, well, they're just apples. Today, I'm actually making more dog food. Uh, I hope to be making I'm making intentionally making less dog food every single week so that I can get these demos, these cut demos for you guys on a weekly basis. So I'll do my best to measure my quantities so that I can have a new batch of dog food to be made or to be cut every single week. So today is a Kuritsuke. In terms of a core steel, in case you guys are wondering, this is using a VG10 core steel. Uh, it's a very flat profile relative to a chef knife. And so it makes it a lot of fun for someone like me because I love chopping, quick chopping, and I'm a big slicer on the cutting board as well. All right, so that's enough for the talk. I'm going to let the knife talk for me. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll do kind of a kind of an assessment of the overall experience of using this knife uh, in this context right here. All right. <clears throat> What I'll do is I'll try to do different cutting styles so you guys can see a variation of uh, cutting techniques. Uh, I'm not an expert when it comes to cutting techniques, so please don't hold me to that standard. Uh, I'm just a home cook, okay?
right, so we are done with the celery. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> it feels really nice. As you guys can probably tell, it cuts really well. Uh, the VG10 knives typically always have a slightly heavier uh, blade feel to them, uh, which I enjoy um, sometimes, especially when I'm doing fast cuts. I do like knives that are slightly blade heavy versus handle heavy. And so, yeah, so for fast cutting, the I find that slightly blade heavy knives work a little bit better for me. They generate a little bit better cut power. And oh, I still have this stock left. And so I'll leave a, a lot of folks have been asking for a recipe of my dog food. Um, I'll leave it in the description of the video. Basically just very, very simple ingredients that are very dog safe. And I'm not a veterinarian, so please don't quote me on these uh, things. Um, I feed my dog these ingredients. Um, you guys are only seeing like half of the ingredients here. I still have a few others that I didn't pick up this week uh, because they weren't available. But uh, I also cook oatmeal uh, inside the home and that will get mixed into with this food as well. And brown rice, depending on what I'm in the mood for. But yeah, I'll leave a full list of the ingredients uh, in the description below. Okay, so that's carrots. Ooh, carrots and celery rolling all over the place here.
So these are sweet potatoes and yams. I think they're sweet potatoes. Yeah. Our dog likes sweets as well. We also give apples. Um, I don't have apples here because if you guys recall in my last video of demos with this knife, uh, I cut like 40 apples. So we still have apples in the freezer that will go into this mix as well. Okay, so here we are. Mm -mm -mm. I am um, adjusting my my wrist uh, bracelet a lot more today, or because my daughter, my twin daughter uh, Hanya, she pulls on it, and whenever uh, I hold her, so it's getting stretchy, and it's kind of uh, getting in the way of my my knife's um, end cap here. Slightly annoying, but it's all right.
Okay, so here are the sweet potatoes. And in case you guys are wondering, I'm not trying to get the, you know, the thinnest slices possible. The dog does like chunks. And so these slices are normally a little thicker than if I were to cut it for my own personal cooking. But yeah, chunky is good for dog food. Cause these, you know, once they cook and they get actually nice and soft, uh, the chunks actually doesn't, it's not a problem at all for any dog. This is the last ingredient. There's a bunch of pieces on the floor as well. <laughs> All right, so, okay. So as you guys can see, it um, it did the work pretty well. I mean, it uh, is, sorry, I should keep this off the off the board. So this um, Dalsrong Kuritsuke is uh, very efficient at cutting, as you guys can see. For people like me who love to chop, do quick chops and fast cutting, um, it is more fun to use than a typical uh, or a chef knife or a gyoto. So, you know, a lot of folks have been asking what is the difference between a Kuritsuke and a Gyoto? Well, the main difference is really the profile. Oftentimes you can find, at least in this case with Dalstrong, they use the same uh, steel and the same handle for the for the two different knives. But the profile is very dramatically different. Uh, the Kuritskes are more for people who, like, who are like me. Um, I'm not trained in any fashion, so please just understand that when I give you guys uh, my feedback, it's based on just being a home cook. And uh, I like being being able to chop fast uh, more than rocking my knives. Kuritsuke's, because they have a much straighter profile, you're not going to be able to rock as much. You can do some rocking, but you're very limited in terms of your um, how high you can lift that knife, mainly due to the tip of the Kuritsuke. You lift, uh, if you lift it too high, you will risk you know, chipping the tip of this knife, which you do not want. And so with Kuritsuke's, if you have ingredients like cilantro, uh, parsley, you can do some, you know, some quick uh, chopping, rocking on the cutting board. Um, you just have to make sure that you don't lift your tip too high. Speaking of parsley, I think my wife actually left me some parsley in here. Let me just double check real quickly. Uh, no. Okay, it's it must be in the bag that I did not bring out here. So uh, I'll have to go and do that later. 
So, yeah, so overall, with, uh, you know, with chef knives, you can, do, most chef knives with a larger or pronounced belly, you can do a lot more rocking. You can lift the, the end of the knife a lot higher. And so, it really depends on your cutting preference. Uh, for me, Karitskes are more fun, more efficient to use than a chef knife. Um, you know, so, so if you are a chopper like myself, and if you like a more linear style of cutting, whether it's a push cut or whether it's slicing, uh, give a Karitske a try. They're a lot of fun. Uh, you'll, you'll be very surprised at how efficient they can cut um, for that sort of uh, cutting, you know, cutting um, preference or cutting style. Uh, overall, though, this knife did really well. The only ingredient that I wasn't able to kind of uh, cut through, like breeze, was the, the sweet potatoes and the yam. Um, they're very starchy, very thick. And so I, I was able to do a, a f number of fast cuts on them um, when I split them into fours. But uh, in terms of just having it, um, this particular style of knife, or this particular knife, didn't have the cut force that you would need to just split in half and do a quick, uh, quick chop, you know, down the half of that uh, the vegetable. If you had a potato, on the other hand, a regular potato, this knife can probably handle having the potato and just going straight down, or even maybe even a whole potato. Uh, potatoes are a lot softer than sweet potatoes and yams, and so. You know, so the limitation of this knife here, you just have to understand that what you're cutting, uh, the, you know, your ingredient is going to dictate how you cut things as well. And with carrots, the same thing. Carrots are very, you know, very thick and very hard. And so you just have to be careful that if you want to do some quick chops, the knife um, may not be, you know, best suited for that vegetable, at least for that sort of a cut. But I can handle it definitely fine. And also, I'm coming from a a position where I don't have a lot of, I don't generate a lot of cut power uh, relative to someone who does this for a living. And so I think a professional would definitely be able to handle the carrot and the yam and the sweet potato much more efficiently than I would be, or I did. Um, I didn't know this, I actually don't watch TV. I don't have a TV in my home, but a number of my subscribers have been telling me that on the Food Network uh, TV, uh, some of the major you know, celebrity chefs are now all using Chris case, which is interesting to me. Um, I have been telling people that Karitskes are like the next big thing for a long time now. And then I hear that uh, celebrity chefs are using it, which is which is cool. You know, it kinda, it, it's nice to have a celebrity chef validate what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think I had any influence in them switching over to Karitskes. Uh, Karitskes have been kind of the trending talks now for a little while. The reason I know that is because I'm getting... Um, emails and messages from grandparents like literally the, the latest uh, message I got was from I think an 80 year old home cook and uh, she it's a she she asked me about uh, Kritzke which I'm so flattered and I'm so excited for her that she at that age is still learning and still exploring uh, you know different cutting methods and different knives which is so cool and uh, so yeah, uh, you know, hopefully I will, like I said, I will do these cuts. Um, I will attempt to do these demos, the cut demos at least once a week, uh, whether with the same ingredients or different ingredients. If I'm cooking a big meal for a family or for a party, I will do my best to get back here, prep the ingredients here for you guys using different knives as well. Um, obviously I have like a hundred knives or well, actually, <laughs> I have over 200 knives to actually go through at some point. So I will do my best to get more cut tests in here for you guys um, if you guys want to see other cut tests with whether it's chef knives or paring knives and whatever else just leave me uh, leave a comment below and uh, well that'll be it for this video guys thank you so much for being here I'll catch you guys in the next video